young people were able to make money delivering goods to people, it was that simple. Initially, since most people were inside, this was convenient. But as the COVID surge ceased, the streets became more crowded, riders were not obeying traffic, coming down one ways and all that. The influx of Revel scooters also motivated this. These days you don't see as many Revels. People were vandalizing them, stealing them, committing robberies with them, and murdering others, while using them as well. This is not Revel's fault though, it is more of a, I seen it happen so now we can do it that way. It's like saying, people used to fight before the first person used a gun. Once it happens, it becomes sort of like a trend, it only evolves. These shooting were not exclusive to Revel at all, as people bought their own brand of scooters too. So shootings became a thing, and it's rather disgusting. For a gang member, or assailant, it would prove to be useful, as you can maneuver through traffic in streets you wouldn't be able to using a car. It's not just the electric scooters, it's dirt bikes too. They go hand in hand, but how can you be accurate enough to hit a target while moving? Where would you practice that? Inadequate shooting training, come on, innocent people are getting hit, and some are dying. These past two years have been nasty in the five boroughs. Between Brooklyn and the Bronx, guys are out here wallin'. We are not even going to cover all the shootings. Of course not all shootings result in murder, however, others did change some of the individuals, such as paralyzing or leaving the victim in a vegetable state. Here, we will mention five notable scooter dirt bike murders in the Bronx. This first murder, would rock the Bronx, as it was a part of a bigger gang war. An 800YG member got killed. Without going into everything, as it has been covered multiple times, we will use an excerpt from one of our previous videos to explain this part. Okay, so if you all remember, 16-year-old Rajis was killed in an Uber on 178th and Valentine Avenue. Two guys rode through on a scooter and shot through the window. His death contributed to the light being shed on the Bronx drill scene. We say that to say, just a year before he died, he was shot on the block of Prospect Avenue in Oakland Place, July 7th, 2020, as you see here. Now, police say the call came in at 3.30 for a 15-year-old boy shot one time in the back. Detectives working a crime scene at Oakland Place and Prospect Avenue, where several small orange cones covered what appeared to be shell casings right across the street from a school. A police source tells me after the 15-year-old was shot, he made his way around the block towards his home. Police say the two suspects, possibly teenagers themselves, fled northbound on Prospect Avenue on a black and silver scooter. Crazy. Same thing. Dudes on scooters. Okay, so that was Rajis. That was crazy. Currently, Nesty Flocks, his partner, is coming up in Bronx drill rap. Moving along though. Another situation happened three days later on July 14th, 2021. Although this is not particularly a murder, it went unnoticed. So, a man miraculously survived after a group of gunmen on dirt bikes shot him four times in the head during a Bronx carjacking. The 45-year-old victim was driving in the eastbound lane of the Washington Bridge at University Avenue around 12.15 a.m. The crew of bikers surrounded him. This is when they opened fire, striking the man four times in the head. In addition to the shooting, the victim crashed, and the suspects jumped into his car and dipped. This is according to the police. The victim was taken to Lincoln Medical Center in stable condition. Investigators discovered five 22 caliber shell casings on the scene. Near the Cross Bronx Expressway and University Avenue, police found the victim car, but no sign of the suspects. As of today, not sure if these guys were ever apprehended. After this murder, the police commissioner said that the Bronx hasn't been this violent since 1996. Twelve days after this, another murder would take place. Although he got arrested in March of 2022, we will speak of it as of when it happened. It happened in Harlem, but you will understand the relevance afterward. So, a gang member was arrested this year for a Harlem shooting that killed a 19-year-old man last summer. Paul Johnson, a Bronx drill rapper that goes by the name PJ Glizzy, was arrested and charged with murder and reckless endangerment. He is a part of the Cortland Avenue crew and the same gang as Bronx drill rapper and fellow gang member Shawty K. According to documents, PJ Glizzy had numerous prior arrests, including for gun possession in May 2021. So, allegedly, PJ, 20, took the wheel of a green and orange dirt bike with another man sitting behind him. They were throttling toward a crowd of people on Frederick Douglass Boulevard on West 141st Street. It was about 9.45 p.m. The person on the back drew a gun and opened 
fire. Everybody began to run and duck. The victim, Matthew Sumter, also known as Matt Sav, did the same, running with his friends, but was shot in the stomach. As he was inspecting his wound, he collapsed to the pavement. Police scoured through video of the killing, as well as footage of the dirt bike before and after the shooting, getting a clear image of Johnson as the driver, according to the complaint. It was said that Matt Sav belonged to the 2MF gang, for Mafia family. He also had an arrest record, dating back to when he was 11, and busted for robbery. As for PJ, he is currently locked up for this, but hasn't been sentenced. On November 2, 2021, friends of a charismatic young man gathered to mourn his death in a drive-by shooting. Crazy thing is, this happened the opposite way. He was actually the one on the scooter that got shot. Hednick Weiner, a 22-year-old aspiring rapper, was remembered by almost 100 of his peoples outside his old borough home. They celebrated him, lighting candles in his honor, and played some of his favorite music. Weiner was sharing a scooter with his 18-year-old friend, riding along Addy Avenue in Williamsbridge when things turned deadly. A BMW suddenly stops on near Colden Avenue. Three passengers jump jump out and almost immediately, all three men squeeze off multiple rounds. After the three shooters get back into the car, one hops back out, fires one more shot, and then jumps back in as their getaway driver starts to pull away. The whole car stop lasted only about 20 seconds. Weiner was shot in the head. He was rushed to a nearby hospital and subsequently pronounced dead. Meanwhile, the teen was wounded in the leg and was taken to an area hospital for treatment. Another victim of the gunfire was 69-year-old woman who was an innocent bystander. She was walking her dog. She was grazed in the leg and treated at the scene, but refused further medical attention. Weiner was visiting his old block, as he had just gotten his GED, moved to Connecticut, and gained an interest in culinary arts. As of May 19, 2022, no one has been arrested in connection to this murder. As for the current events, a young girl was killed in the Bronx. Again, this stuff is utterly disgusting, and there is a $10,000 reward for the cowards who can't go up to the person they have a problem with and have a problem with them. This is very angering. This week, an innocent 11-year-old girl was fatally shot in broad daylight. She was identified as Kahara Tay. The girl was named after the Cub Kiara in Disney's animated movie, The Lion King. Kahara, who was outside New Kim Nails on Fox Street waiting for a relative who was inside when bullets started flying. She got shot and then she came into the store like she was trying to get away from the gunshots, said an 18-year-old she was with. They were trying to feel for the pain. She was holding her stomach saying ow. A 48-year-old woman in a nearby vehicle heard the shots. She told her son, get down. Get down and get down in the car. Then she took her son out of the car and went into the salon. The girl sat on the chair and was becoming unresponsive. This is when she seen the young lady. When I went inside, she fell on the ground, she added. I saw her bleeding, and I pulled her t-shirt up, and I asked the lady in the nail salon to give me napkins. I was pressing, cause she had a hole. I said, she shot. She shot. She got shot. Call the ambulance. So I was putting pressure on her belly. The girl was rushed to Lincoln Hospital, where she died. The man the shooter was aiming for had tried, unsuccessfully, to duck into an assisted living facility on Fox Street, before running south on Westchester Avenue. Quick moving footage shows the intended target running down the block, trying to get away from a duo on a scooter, before the man riding on the back of the moped opened fire. And developments of the story. 15-year-old Matthew Godwin. He has been charged with her murder. The murder of 11-year-old Kiara Tay is what police are now charging Matthew Godwin with. They say that he was the person on the back of this motor scooter who shot at a 13-year-old rival on Monday afternoon and missed. Instead, a stray bullet hit Kiara, an innocent bystander, killing her. Police also say they're looking for the motor scooter driver, who they say is 18-year-old Omar Bojang. Omar is not a stranger to law enforcement. He himself is a victim of gun violence. Shot twice, arrested for gun possession, and wanted for robbery. Kahara is the latest young victim of gun violence in the city. This same week, another act of violence takes place, using a scheme that people have used for robberies in the past. A 20-year-old man was shot dead in broad daylight during a motorcycle sale. The victim who drove down from Rockland County with three other men to buy a Kawasaki motorcycle they found on Facebook Marketplace. 
Side note, back then, this would have taken place on Craig's list. So they drove to a desolate spot under the Mage Deegan, located by East 144th and Exterior Streets in Mott Haven. The meeting was going down around 3.40 p.m. One of the alleged sellers pulled a gun out and shot the 20-year-old buyer.